Welcome everybody to this video. My name is Max from Laser Beast Lab. In this video, we're gonna go over a few things to consider when getting your uh, laser engraver. Um, I started my laser engraving journey about two years ago, and since then have acquired a couple more machines. Um, that being said, uh, I've asked a lot of important questions prior to buying a laser, um, some things that you might wanna consider when doing your own research. So this video will kind of act as a guide for you and help you out along your process. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just jump right in. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is what materials do you want to engrave? There are two types of lasers that Omtech has, and that's your fiber and your CO2. If you're looking to do more materials in like wood or acrylic, then you're looking towards a CO2 laser. If you are looking to do more metal engraving, then you want to reach for the fiber laser. Um, those are going to be kind of the material divides that you'll kind of encounter when you're first looking at lasers. Um, so just ask yourself, what do you want to engrave and then move on from there. The next thing you want to think about is your laser wattage. Your laser wattage refers to how much power is going to be sent through your laser, uh, which will give you an estimate of how much your max cutting thickness is. So ask yourself, how thick do you want to cut? If you're just looking to do thinner material like 8th inch plywood, uh, 40 watts will be perfect for you. However, if you're looking to do thicker stuff like half inch, then you want to look at the 130 watt. For fiber lasers, basically the higher the wattage, the deeper that it'll engrave and faster it'll engrave too. So if you're not in a rush and you have the time, a 20 watt can probably get you by. However, if you wanna kinda of speed through some things and get stuff done faster, you wanna to look towards the 50 watt fiber. So you know what materials you wanna do and you also now know what power you want. So let's figure out what size machine you want. Let's look at the overall machine dimension, something that gets overlooked quite a bit and is very, very important. While browsing on Omtech's website, you can take a look at each product page and there will be an overall dimension uh, that you can take a look at and figure out if it'll fit in your space or not. So I'd say grab a tape measure, go to where you plan on putting it and just measure out those dimensions and make sure it's gonna fit. The other thing you wanna look out for too is, is it gonna fit through the door to get to where you want it to go? So look at the overall width of your machine and see if you can figure out a way to get it through that door without it being a problem. So now that you have the overall machine dimensions in mind, let's take a look at the bed size. Now the bed size refers to how large of material you can fit inside your machine. Uh, are you looking to do doormats or larger pieces of wood? Well, let's take a look at the machines and see what bed size it has and see if it fits. Now, if it doesn't quite fit, but it has the right power you're looking for, let's see if it has some pass-through doors. Uh, some of the cool features about Omtex machines is they have little slits inside the machine where you could actually feed through larger pieces of wood that wouldn't normally fit inside your, your laser machine bed. If the material looking to fit inside your bed doesn't quite work, but it does work with those pass-through doors, uh, make sure when you're actually taking those machine dimensions, you're adding yourself a little bit of space to move your machine around so that way you could fit your material through those pass-through doors. So now that you got kind of your length and width dimensions in mind, let's also take a look at the depth. Um, the Z-depth is the maximum depth of the workbed. If you want to engrave the top surface of taller items, you'll need to check the spec as well. It's listed in all of the CO2 laser listings that's on Omtech's website. So just give yourself um, another look around basically on the product page before you click that buy button. So while you're looking at the Z-depth for all the machines, uh, you're gonna come across a couple different models that Omtech offers on their website. Uh, and that's gonna be your autofocus, your manual focus, and your motorized Z. Now the focus refers to the gap between your material and the lens, and you wanna make sure it's in focus that it engraves correctly. Um, but your bed needs to move up and down to accommodate the size material that you place in there. So Omtech has three different versions to help you with this. Uh, they have the autofocus, the manual focus, and the motorized Z. You can kind of see the difference of them on their website. They have a resource hub with some blogs that explain the difference, but a quick uh, breakdown of these, the autofocus has kind of a guide system, a little stick, let's say, uh, that's attached to the side of the lens that'll automatically adjust the height uh, to make sure it's right before it starts engraving. The manual focus just has a twist knob that moves your bed up and down, and the motorized Z has uh, a motor basically that moves it up and down for you that you can use with your Ruida display. So the last thing to think about when choosing the right Z-depth or uh, your focus model would be to see if the machine has a debris collection system. Um, the debris collection system or catch tray basically guides and funnels all of your excess cutoffs from you know, your engravings or cuttings and puts it into a tray that you can easily clean out. It's a really cool feature, but the downside is that it takes up a sizable portion of the workbed undercarriage. 
So if uh, Z depth is very important, like you want to use a rotary attachment or fit larger objects, you're going to want to avoid the debris collection system so that way you can maximize your Z depth. So let's go ahead and talk about some add ons. Now that we've kind of got your Z depth in mind, um, one thing to think about too is if you want a rotary attachment. A rotary attachment is something OnTech offers. It's basically a guide so you can put um, glasses or, or bottles or around objects basically to turn as it engraves so that way you can do designs on cylindrical objects. So if you're looking at doing a rotary attachment, the only machine you'll have to avoid is the 40 watt lasers that OnTech offers. They are their desktop models. They do have a lot of power, but what they don't have is a lot of bed size or, or any depth. It's a fixed depth kind of machine. So just avoid that and move on to your 50 watt plus if you're looking to get the rotary attachment. You could also use the rotary attachment for fiber laser as well too. Um, and this goes standard with any of the 20 watt, 30 watt, or the 50 watt. You can use both the roller rotary, which just has your four basic wheels that turn as you're doing the engraving, or there's a chuck rotary, which basically clamps onto the mouthpiece of your cylindrical object. Another thing to think about when choosing your laser machine uh, is the add-on of a lens. Uh, they come pretty standard with some great lenses, um, and they'll be able to cut and engrave right off the box. Um, but what a lot of people don't think about is the tapering involved with cutting. So let's say like a two inch lens will cut through almost any wood and acrylic under half inch without any tapering. But if you wanted to cut thicker than half inch materials, you're gonna have to upgrade to a two and a half or a three inch lens. OnTech on their website does have some lens available that you can purchase that are from American Photonics. If you're looking to cut some thicker woods, I would recommend taking a look at the larger lens. Another add-on you're going to want to take a look into uh, when getting your laser machine is going to be your extraction fan. Now, OmTech does have extraction fans standard on all their CO2 lasers. However, on their favorite fiber ones, you're going to want to get um, a hose and an extraction fan. So that way you can you can vent out all those fumes that are coming from your, your metal marking. Um, they do have some extraction fans provided by AC Infinity available on their website you could take a look at. Um, and then also you could use those two as for your CO2 laser as well. Um, they do come standard with built-in ones. However, the AC Infinity ones are a little bit stronger. So if you wanted to put that at the end of your hose going outside the window, um, you'll just want to remove your built-in extraction fan so that way it doesn't do any harm and then just use the AC Infinity one. The last add-on I want to talk about in this video is going to be your water chiller. Now this is something that's absolutely necessary when getting a CO2 laser machine. It's not needed though for a fiber laser. So when getting your CO2 laser, you're going to want to get some sort of water chiller setup, which OmTech has uh, you know, various amounts available on their website. Um, the desktop models like the 40 watts do come with a water pump and those work great to get yourself started. However, you do want to look into getting um, some sort of automated water chiller system to preserve the tube life. Now, having your tube at the right temperature all the time gives you consistency and also increases the longevity on your laser tube. So um, it's really good to get this right off the bat and start with uh, you know the best possible scenario. Well, that wraps it up for the information on this video. I hope that this video serves as a great guide to help you pick out the right machine that's right for you. If you do have any questions that I did not cover in this video, please let us know down below in the comments. There is also a fantastic resource hub that's available on OnTech's website that can answer a bunch of questions as well. And of course, if you need additional support, you can reach out to their support page at contact support.